Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and if you've built yourself a shiny gaming PC, or you've been using one for a while, but you feel like things aren't quite right, you're not getting the frames you deserve, or perhaps your CPU's running a bit hot, maybe in the high 80s or high 90s in some cases, then stick with me because I'm going to show you some tricks that you can use to improve the temps and not impact performance while doing so. I've done a couple of videos recently on whether your CPU's thermal throttling, how to check, and sort that out and whether a small cooler can cool an i9. But in this video I want to show you how to use a few free tools to test your system out and also to improve performance with just a few clicks in Windows so you don't need to worry necessarily about the BIOS. Those tools include Cinebench R24, Hardware Monitor or Hardware Info 64 and Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. They're all free and I'll link to those in the description and the pinned comments so that you can download them easily. And with Intel's XTU, you can use the stress test system within there to see if your CPU is thermal throttling. Thermal throttling occurs when the CPU is getting too hot and then performance takes a hit so that the CPU can cool down and it doesn't get destroyed and damaged during that process, which is good because it will help with the longevity of your CPU, but it may take a hit on your performance. You can also benchmark your system within an XTU and get a score that you can then compare with others online or keep for a reference to use in a minute. If you've noticed that you've got a hot running CPU, this may well be down to AI overclocking on some motherboards there's automatic overclocking applied to your CPU which could seemingly be boosting the speed of your CPU in terms of megahertz performance but at the expense of thermal throttling your CPU making it run too hot. This can be found in the BIOS settings and sometimes within software so ASUS has it on most of their motherboards for example that you can turn on the AI overclocking via Armory Crate or in the settings on the BIOS and you may want to play around with that and perhaps turn it off as one of the stops for cooling things down. So to start with, use Cinebench 2024 along with Hardware Monitor or Hardware Info to get a good benchmark of your system and see what it's performing like. So we're going to use Hardware Monitor, expand the temperature readouts on Hardware Monitor so we can keep an eye on that. And then we're going to run Cinebench 2024 on its multi-core test and let that run. What this will do is put your system under heavy load that will then probably thermal throttle your CPU and max out the temperatures and you will see some alarming red readouts on hardware monitor at this time. Don't panic because Cinebench does put it under very heavy load. However, what you want to do is make a note of the score that we've got here so you can see 1,578 and pay attention to how high your temperature's got. So you can see I've got a maximum of 100 degrees on multiple cores. This is not good. So there are some things we can do about this at software level that I'm gonna show you now. So this is done easily with Intel's Extreme Tuning Utility. This is an overclocking tool, generally speaking, but you can use it to reduce temperatures. And one of the ways to do this is with core voltage offset. Well, essentially what we're doing here is we're undervolting the CPU, reducing the amount of voltage that it has, and therefore reducing the amount of power it draws and the heat it puts out, but without negatively impacting performance necessarily. So what you need to do is adjust the core voltage offset by putting it into a minus number, and then we need to apply that. So we're gonna start with 0.05 volts, for example, and then click apply. Now you will notice that this warns that watchdog is causing problems and that the state will not stay there during reboot. This is a, a problem you might not face. I wanna cover it in a little while and talk about why that could be a problem. But for now, I'm gonna show you what would normally happen. If you go into settings and advanced options, you'll see restore tuning after reboot. Make sure this is ticked. If you can't tick it, then that's gonna be an issue that I'll get to later in the video, but you should be able to. Then what you want to do is just to reduce the core voltage offset. So put it into a minus figure and then click apply. I'd recommend starting with a low number like 0.05 volts, for example, and then working your way up. What we're going to do is test if this makes a difference, how much difference it makes. You will see when you apply a core voltage offset that it will appear in hardware monitor as well. So you'll see it under the voltage listed on your CPU. So when you click apply, you'll notice that on hardware monitor that the voltage is then set as minus figure there. There's a slight difference between what's on the hardware monitor and what's applied in XTU, but it's basically the same values essentially. Once that's applied, we can then run that Cinebench test again. Obviously we're monitoring the temperatures still, Keep in mind that it will run very hot with Cinebench, so you still may see some very hot temperatures on the max, 
but hopefully the standard values will be a little bit lower and you probably want to run some game tests on this as well so stick with me and I'll show you some examples of that in a minute but what we're looking for is a better score with Cinebench overall and hopefully a reduction in those temperatures too. There are other things you can do to reduce temperatures but reducing the voltage may well help as a really easy fix. You can see that now once Cinebench has run that we've now got 1910 as the score after this has been applied. So that's quite an increase in score with a minimal reduction. Now you can run through the core voltage offset and up the limit a little bit, so taking away even more voltage, but what you may find is if you take away too much that Cinebench freezes. So it's worth testing little increments and then running your favorite games, benchmarking and using Cinebench to see if your system is stable. If you take away too much voltage, it may well lead to crashes and reductions. But if you can get it stable, you may find that not only is your temperatures coming down, but your FPS is improving. So a CPU bound game like Rainbow Six Siege, for example, if we run tests on that, you might see a reduction in temperatures, but also an improvement in FPS. In this example here, it's about 10 or 20 FPS increase while reducing the temperatures and reducing the chance of thermal throttling. So experiment with things like that, play your favorite games, make sure it's stable with the adjustment and also see if there's an increase in FPS while doing it. And then just, you can then tweak a little bit more if you want to, but I'd recommend starting off with the low settings. Now, if for some reason you can't change the voltage limit, this could be down to a setting in the BIOS. So on a Zeus motherboards, for example, if you go to AI Tweaker, then Tweaker's Paradise, you'll see in there that there is an option for under volt protection. If this is marked as enabled, this will prevent you from adjusting the voltage in Windows. So you won't actually be able to use XTU to under volt your CPU. So you need to make sure that's set to disabled and then you'll be able to use XTU. So if it's marked as enabled, click it to disable it and then go back into Windows and you should then be able to tweak the voltage settings. Earlier on, I talked about the problems that I had with it, where if you try and apply it, sometimes you get a warning that it says it will reset when you reset Windows. And this is due to the watchdog timer. On this motherboard, I experienced issues where the watchdog timer driver wasn't working properly. And therefore, every time you restart, basically the settings you put next to you reset. This is obviously not ideal. You don't want to apply that under vaulting every time you boot your machine up. Now, if you go into device manager, hopefully this will fix it for you. Go into device manager, click to view, show hidden devices, scroll down through the system devices and look for Intel watchdog timer driver, right click on that and then click update driver and search automatically for new drivers. Hopefully this will fix your issue. You can do it via Windows Update as well. It didn't work for me and I'm gonna try and work out a fix for it. So let me know if that'd be useful to you in the comments below and I'll get back in future with another video on this. But hopefully with these settings, you can get better performance out of your system. Now, the other thing I'd say is if you find this doesn't work, there are some other things you can do. One of the biggest things I found with thermal throttling, for example, is thinking about the positioning of your fans how many intake fans you've got and the airflow within your case can make a real big difference to your system. Yes, adding push-pull to your radiator, for example, can make a big difference, but even just having more intake fans can also help. Changing your thermal pace can also help. And as I said, I've covered these things in another video that I'll link to in the description. So be sure to check out those other videos, but hopefully this one will help you out too. If you found anything in this video useful, then please consider subscribing and big thanks to my YouTube members who help support the channel. I really appreciate them and you for watching. Thank you very much. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.